Hello. Uh, yep. Today, uh, or this morning, uh, I would like to show you, explain some of the combat system in Kuro no Kiseki. The, I would say the gameplay loop, the general guide-ish that people, people that haven't played the game may or may not understand how some of the combat system work in Kuro no Kiseki. Uh, most of the stuff I gather are just from me playing the game and some very basic testing, eyeball tests, and uh, some of the numbers I pull are from a modder that has a look into the file of the game. So again, it's secondhand information. I don't have the actual data. I just got it from someone by the word of mouth, basically. So this for this i guess guide you can call it i'll try to show everything the changes of combat system in kuro no kiseki what they change what they add into kuro no kiseki when we compare it to all the games like cold steel hajimari all that stuff so kuro no kiseki what are some of the changes in the game first uh it's the way escrow works this is the Escraft logo. This is physical attack. This is magical attack. By that I mean it will use your magical stats. This or ATS, art strength. For this you will use your strength. Every character has at least one. Like Aeneas at this point in game, level 7. I think I'm on chapter 2. She only has no Escraft, one physical attack, and one healing. This is the icon for support. So. Again, this guide is contextually for people that play in Japanese and don't know any Japanese or maybe use some kind of uh, fan translation that we have been waiting for from the Zero Field team. So this guide might not make sense for newer players that play in English, but uh, whatever. Uh, I just put it out there. So for what the changes they add is that they show the hitbox. So at this, uh, this, I guess, plus or cross hitbox is usually for circle this is for a very wide cone this is circle this is very big rectangular so basically most of the uh, hitbox in cold steel you have your long rectangular arc slash like rinse arc slash that hitbox you know straight line you have the big circle, small circle, some kind of cone. No, nothing much. No, there's not a lot of changes from previous game in terms of hitboxes. But the first change about the battle system, combat system, in Kuro no Kiseki is how Escraft works. That's like the big change. Uh, Escraft now will cost 100 CP flat. But like in previous game, you will get extra damage if you use craft when you have 200 cps but in this game you will not get that bonus damage so technically you can spam craft non-stop going by that logic so you can use two consecutive craft provided you have 200 cp the other change that we need to know about the craft change in this game is that craft has some kind of condition so basically, if you can see, Escraft, I press R2, R2 is for your Esprit, so Esprit page. You can see CP100 and then you can see 2 S-Boost Gauge. What is S-Boost Gauge? S-Boost Gauge is this thing. See, bottom left. You can see there are 3 bars, I am at 0 out of 3. So, I cannot use Escraft, even though I have... Assuming I have enough CP, I have 70 at the moment. So, to use Ashcraft in this game, you need to have 100 CP and you need to have 2 S Boost Gauge. What S Boost Gauge means? So, uh, uh, I'll explain about boost later on, but just I will try, I will recall about the boost thing and Ashcraft later on. But conditionally, you need to have, to use Ashcraft, you need to have enough CP and enough S Boost Gauge or be in full boost mode the general idea about boosting is that this one so this is your holo core you can see zero out of two there are two 
level of boost in this game i'll explain about boosting a bit more later on but boosting means you activating your holo core and you need to be in full boost that means that gauge over there must be two out of two to use your s craft so that's basically it we don't have enough cp at the moment we don't have enough uh we don't have enough cp and s boost at the moment uh s boost gauge at the moment so let's kill this thing and get our cp back the second thing about the change uh, the, the game that they changed from previous game is that cp is a lot easier to get look at my cp i have 70 at the moment normal attack in general will give you 10 cp back and when you kill enemies you will get 10 cp back but if you kill if you use art and attack enemy you will get two or, or three cp so they are very generous with cp in this game so the cycle and the gameplay loop of the game is that if you lack cp just normal attack uh, normal attack has the shortest delay right so let's see i'll normal attack look at my cp game oops damn it <laughs> give me a sec <laughs> okay look at my cp I'll use Vine as an example. Okay, I have 96. One normal attack will get you flat 10 CP. 96, 106. So now, we have enough boost. We have one and a half. So we have two full boosts. We have two boost gauge at the moment. Let's see, I press L1. L1 is the way for you to be in full boost mode. When I press L1, it will consume one gauge or one bar. And then I press L2 to see your holo core activation. You can see I am at one out of two, but I cannot use my S break because I don't have enough s boost i I'm, i don't have enough i'm not in full boost mode so what do i need to do is to get look i am one out of two even though i have enough cp so i'll consume one more bottoms bottom i am two out of two my holo core is already activated whenever i press s break i fulfill the condition Okay, now we are, we are here. We don't have any status element. We are in full boost, as you can see, bottom right. We fulfill the condition of using our S craft to boost gauge once 100 CP. We can now use our S craft. So if you have another 100 CP, you can use them again. So basically that's the general change of S-Craft from previous game to Kuro no Kiseki. Done! So the second edition about the game that people already know about is that about uh, Field Battle. Uh, field, field Battle, Action Mode, whatever you call it, it's just something that... Uh, you know, the, tra the translation, what term they use for this system. So, field battle is very simple. You have normal attack. You have that bar on your right that is your for your charge attack. If you press R2, you can stun your enemies. And if you press X, you can dodge. But the timing can be a bit iffy because on 60 FPS, the timing and the iframe for dodging is a bit iffy. But if you can pull perfect dodge, do just dodge, whatever you want to call it, perfect dodge very easily. So the gameplay loop is attack your opponent, stun them, and then play in turn-based mode.
the, the gameplay loop is like that. Let's try another one. So the gameplay will, we will be attacked and try to stun them. And then when they are stunned, you will get an advantage when you press square to release your shard. Release your shard, uh, release... Deploy shard or releasing shard skill just means playing in turn-based mode, you press square. That's basically the turn of the game use. So when there are shard skill that say, oh, when deploying shard or when releasing shard, that means you have to play in turn-based turn -based mode to get the effect. So release your shard, deploy your shard, after you stun your enemies, you will get some kind of bonus and for some, some shard skill you get extra HP back, you get some EP back, you get some CP back and you deal a bit more damage to your uh, your opponent to get the advantage. So the gameplay loop and the gameplay balance between uh, combat in action and turn-based mode is just that. You use action mode or field mode to attack your enemies and stun them if they are bulky your AI will pop in on the left uh, on the on the left hand side of the corner like mayor will pop will will pop its head and said yo this enemy is tanky you need to kill it with magic duh you can't technically you can kill it with action mode it just takes a while you you will notice the damage you dealt the the, the stun gauge doesn't increase as much the the HP bar doesn't go down as much so that's when you get the notion that oh yeah I need to kill this thing in at turn-based mode using arts okay so let's kill it so if possible throughout the game try to stun every enemy you can encounter if they they take you know decent damage from your your attack in action mode then try to kill them or try to stun them at least so the gameplay loop is like that attack them try to stun them whenever they stun release your shard deploy your shard press square play in action mode uh, play in turn based mode sorry and get the bonuses and some of the advantage you get get the advantage get some of the bonuses you need okay that's the about the action mode so you get normal attack whenever you perfect dodge you will feel that uh charges that uh charge at that uh charge attack bar but you can just hit uh, slash enemy non-stop it will charge your charge charge attack bar as well but perfect dodge just full uh, just refill it instantly
Let's talk about Scrum. So what is Scrum? Scrum or SCLM? What is SCLM? This one. <laughs> the game will introduce the mechanic, but in terms of shard kill, you can see bottom tree, the, the third from the bottom, SCLM or Scrum. What is Scrum? Scrum essentially, or to put it simply, is the link system in the game. Yeah, this one. It's a link system in the game, so like in Arcus 2 or Arcus system in Gold Steel, you can manually switch your partner. You can switch your partner that you are linked to, but in this game, because battle and combat is a lot more dynamic, so you can run around based on the area you are allowed to. That means uh, linking is a lot more flexible. You don't have to manually switch your partner. You can just move to whatever partner you want so first thing first about scrum is there are two things first i'll talk about the the radius and second i'll talk about the effect so this is the basic radius of scrum you can see the size regular this is when you see the scrum ring is dim out it means you are not the active character is not connected like anias and judith at the moment is connected technically but because both of them you, are, you don't control both of them so they are not linked so you need to be controlling the active character to get the link and connection. That's number one. Number two, how to increase the range. You can see reset big ass uh, ring radius. How to get it? First thing first, you can get it by being in full boost. Full boost means you fill up two boost gauge. You can see that I am at zero out of two. I don't have enough boost gauge at the moment. Bottom left. My S boost gauge is one third ish so you can either increase it by being in full boost mode or by using shard skill to increase your range is it beneficial or not depends there are some battles where having movement is a lot more beneficial so you don't aggro your teammates blah 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 so having a big range uh, or having a big radius of the, your scrum link means you get a lot more flexibility in combat. You can move around while being connected. Second, it depends. Some bosses you cannot, you want to aggro them. Some bosses you prefer just to park your park the boss in front of them. Don't move around. You just tank their hits and. I'll talk about shield later. But you basically face tank the boss and heal when necessary. So. It doesn't matter, it depends on your playstyle, if you like flexibility, I like flexibility, so I use the shard skill, if you don't like it, it's fine. So, there are two types of advantage you get from scrum, so first thing first, if you are linked to a partner, if you use only normal attack, your partner will do a follow up attack, like that. Normal attack is good in this game, why, because it, you can easily charge your uh cp one normal attack equals to 10 cp gain so it's at least beneficial you know it the game really encourages you to use normal attack so second what advantage you get while while, while you are linked to a, a partner with scrum is you will get some damage bonus either by casting art or when you use your craft so i'll use craft because it's a lot quicker yeah, you get that pop up on the left side. That means uh, Reset get some damage bonus from her craft. So that's what Scrum is, generally speaking. It's not hard, it's just 
a little bit more flexible and a little uh, a bit more dynamic system for linking that's all so next we will talk about chain hits what is chain hits so as you can see whenever you deal normal attack charge attack infield uh, not normal attack, attack sorry when you attack with arts craft or normal attack pay attention to the left sorry to the right screen you can see chain hits and damage bonus what is chain hit and damage bonus so every attack in this game normal attack charges uh, normal attack craft and art sorry i keep saying charge attack sorry uh, it's normal attack craft and art they all have their own number of chain hits like uh this art sorry this art obsidian ray has 11 i believe if i remember correctly so essentially as long as the enemy doesn't get a turn you will keep stacking your chain hits so it's a, it's good for like long-term battle where you just keep delaying enemies so you will stacking up the chain hits the maximum number of chain hits that you get is infinite if you can get 500 if possible then you can but we do chain hits for the damage bonus you can see pay attention right screen damage bonus 1.1 what does that mean so damage bonus means you as the higher chain you get from your total number of attack the more damage you get so in order to get the maximum number of uh, damage bonus which is 2.5 you need to hit 100 chain hits which is possible because we have arts that have high chain hits like um uh obsidian ray we have uh aerial dust 10 obsidian ray 11 i believe if i remember correctly uh so you will do you i don't remember the name of the art sorry <laughs> it's been a while but essentially that so they are i think we have it for each element i think so at least one element will have one art that is that has high number of chain hits so for wind arts you will have aerial dust which has 10 so that plus arc feather which is the sharp skill that we'll talk later on means you can essentially hit that 100 chain hits you know easily to get the 2.5 damage bonus increase that means you just you just deal more damage the rule is that you cannot get interrupted so let's say you already hit 45 and then the enemy act so van reset anias judis act one turn one until turn four and then the enemy act that means once once the enemy act you will your chain hits chain will be interrupted so you have to start from zero again that's the only rule so chain hit is really good for i guess long-term battle because once you if you can maintain your chain hits while stacking whatever chain hits you can hit <laughs> whatever chain hits number you can get it's it will be useful because you get extra damage from it 2.5 is the highest you cannot go more so if you hit let's say 250 chain hits your damage bonus will still be or will still stay at 2.5 i hit 268 or something i, I have a video on it that's my record at least that, that i remember so you can see the damage bonus is still 2.5 so still good useful this is in my opinion is a art game rather than craft game like in gold steel like gold steel is a little bit more balanced because we have a lot of master quartz that lets you get the best out of your uh our physical attacker that spam arts uh sorry that spam craft but in this game the optimal the optimal way of playing is basically spam arts <laughs> even van and aaron which is my physical attacker they all have usefulness yeah this one this skill arc feather i'll talk about uh the skill later the sharp skill but yeah that's basically it so spam arts try to get arc feather on everyone enjoy your chain hits 
Okay, we talk about scrambling, we talk about chain hits. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk about shield. Shield has been changed mechanically in this game compared to uh, Cold Steel era or even previous game's era. Uh, in previous game, it's more like a damage immunity. The only, if I remember correctly, throughout playing the series until Hajimari no Kiseki or Trot into Rivery, is the only skill that can, the only craft that can break shield is Arios in Azure. His Gale craft, where he dashes at you, the first hit will essentially cancel or register the hit towards the skill, towards your uh, shield, sorry towards your shield so the first hit will cancel your shield so you will take damage on his second hit so in this game it works a little bit different okay you can see van has 12,000 something hp and then it blinks another 2000 so basically to put it simply in this game shield has extra edge seal shield does not give you damage immunity it's just at a layer of hp so let's say the boss s craft deals 14,000 damage my van will survive anius will not survive judith will survive reset will not survive so it's just in terms of damage calculation it will subtract the shield hp which is 2000 and then another 12,000 from your character's HP, that's all. So, in this game, you will need some emergency healing, that's all. We do not, we are not in the days in uh, Erebonia days, Crossbell days, where you can just not taking hits, <laughs> essentially. So that's how she'll work in this game. Done. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about boost. What is boost? Boost is the core mechanic for, aside from holocore, boost is the core mechanic. I'll talk about holocore later, so let's talk about boost for now. <laughs> what is boost? So boost is this thing that you can see down there. You can see this three bar as boost. So that is your boost gauge. <clears throat> so there are three functions of as boost. First of all, you use as boost to activate your holocore. Like, okay, this screen, this is your holocore, and you can see I am 0 out of 2. If I am 1 out of 2, that means I am at level 1 boost. If I am 2 out of 2, that means I am at full boost or level 2 boost. So, I'll talk, I'll, I'll talk about a holocore later on, but a holocore in this game is essentially a conditional master quartz. It, it is a conditional master quartz. As you can see, the bonuses that I get from mayor holocore, there are a lot of stats increase, there's a lot of uh, dodge increase, crit rate increase by 30%, physical damage increase 25%, magic damage increase 25%, and then HP regen, EP regen 9% every turn. And then the first line is just basically stats increase. So you can see Van, you can see attack, art, and speed. So I'm not activated right now, right? So that's his base stats for now. <coughs> so I say that Holocore means uh, to to activate your Holocore, essentially to get the bonuses running, you need to be in boost mode. Level 1 is enough. Level 2 full boost doesn't really matter. Level 1 is the bare minimum. If you are at level 1 or level 2, doesn't matter. Level 1 boost is the bare minimum. Is there, you Once you are in any state of boost, so level 1 or full boost, you will get the, uh, the Holocore bonuses. So before I talk about that, the second function of boost gauge is to increase your activation rate for your shard skill. So you can see, uh, at the current rate, my shard skill activation rate is 25%. Okay. So I'm gonna jump back to Holocore after this, but essentially, this is fun, it's not in boost state, boosted mode. Right? So I said, I mentioned earlier that. You need to be in boost state, at least level 1 boost to activate your holocore, number 1. Number 2, to increase the activation of your shark skill. So right now my shark skill is at 25%. If I activate my boost, my holocore is activated. So you can see the stats increase. 
the, my speed is higher my attack is higher you can compare and contrast and then the percentage activation rate for my shard skill has increased and if I am I if I if I am in full boost, I'm at level one. Nothing changes. I don't get extra stats. I just get you you get the stats. You get the bonuses. What what holo core bonuses you have? You are when you are in level one boost. You don't really need level two <coughs> minimum. So level two boost will increase my shard skill activation rate. The other function of boosting is I cannot you need as I, as, as I mentioned earlier at the start of the, of the video you need to be in full boost mode or level 2 boost to get your shard uh, to get to, to use your Ascraft you can see the information tap yeah you can see CP plus 100 uh, CP CP 100 plus full boost or s boost s boost time two that means you use, you need to spend two s boost gauge so they are those are the three function of uh boosting number one to activate your holo core to get all whatever gimmick or and stats increase your all your holo core has number two to increase the activation rate of your short skill whatever short skill you have number three full boost only to get to use your s break or your s craft so essentially that's what whole that's what boosting is think of holo core as a i guess conditional master quartz like master quartz in previous game you put your master quartz some must, most master court you get the effect straight away some master court like chevalier magius you need to to get the full bonuses you need to be at lower hp right so some master card like pandora you get the bonuses straight away you just need to pandora you spend you you spend more ep to get higher dam art damage blah 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 right so think of holo coral as a conditional master cards for it applies to everyone it applies to every holo core oh if you have holo core that reduce your casting time yeah you can get the casting time reduction but you need to be in boost but boost mode at least level one level one is enough to get the activation to activate your holo core essentially level two not that important if you like to have higher activation rate on your shard skill or you have if you want to use your s-craft or s break you can but level one for holo core only level one is enough that's all so while we are on a, well while we are on the topic of s boost holo core blah 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 right s boost Yes, I talk about S craft or S break earlier. Uh, you can get at maximum, you can get maximum, you can get nine S boost gauge for like a long battle. So yeah, you can maintain your boost on everyone. Everyone can be in the full boost mode easily. So in order to increase your S boost gauge, this is for the first game, essentially but because they changed the mechanic in the second game but essentially if you want to increase your s boost gauge bar the maximum you can get is 9 in order to do is to spam s craft in the first game you can spam s craft consecutively like okay i'm gonna use anias because she has healing s craft so anias 1 anias 2 2 s craft back to back And you can see we have four boost gauge as boost gauge that's four and then one more s craft we have five so the maximum you can get is nine so three initial plus six so you need to spam maximum six s craft to get the number i in my opinion i think it's just a lot more beneficial in long-term battle compared to regular battle if you can see yourself having like i don't know 
25-40 turns against like a big boss then spamming s craft and getting more s boost uh, s sorry s boost might be s boost gauge essentially might be beneficial in a way that you can maintain your boost across the whole team right three is not enough not in, not enough for the full party even at level one boost so there are some benefits in spamming s craft like in previous game s craft spamming is essentially a way to one shot bosses right in this game not to that extent so the game kind of balance out as break or as craft by giving you the player some advantage but not as you know make the game a cake walk like in the first game so spam your s boost sorry spam your s craft get your s boost gauge and try to maintain your boost throughout like a long combat so let's talk about Zypha and Holocore. So before we start talking about Zypha, let's talk about... Sorry, before we start talking about Holocore, let's talk about Zypha. So Zypha is essentially the new Ortman. Previously, Arcus 2 in Cold Steel 4, Trails into Reverie, Cold Steel 3. So there are a few characteristics of Zypha. First, it uses Holocore. I will talk about Holocore after this. So Essentially, Zypha has minimum 15 slot. So Van 15, Anius 15, Ferry 15, Aaron 15, Reset all 16, Kataru, Katar, Katra, whatever, however the name is pronounced, I use Kataru uh, 15, Judith 15, Vergar 15. <clears throat> uh, just like Arcus, just like previous games, uh, it, it, each character has their own. Um, elemental slot so Van has I just pointed here I guess Van has time and earth Anias has space and water Fairy has fire and mirage Aaron has wind and fire Rizet has water and wind Kataru has uh, earth and space Judith has time and uh, time and mirage Burgard has space and earth. <clears throat> uh, I think maybe it's just me speaking, but you can kind of guess the character's build or like intended role based on their elemental slot on which line. So before we talk about line, I want to explain about they are four lines. You can see the logo. This is sword logo, shield logo, art logo, and ex logo. What what is what's that? So the first line is the we call it the weapon line. So weapon line has their own uh, sharp skill, a set of sharp skill that you can get by combining and min min, min uh, match um, matching min maxing the elemental value. I'll talk about the sharp skill later. But essentially, each line, so weapon, shield, or drive, not art drive line, and extra line, they all have each set of Short skill that you can get basically the another weapon that you can use or another option gimmick that you can use in battle blah 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 right <clears throat> so i'll talk about holocore first before we go to short skill i'll i'll explain and give my thoughts on each short skill so back to the character bill you can kind of guess the character's intended role i guess based on first the number of uh, the number of slot they have on their weapon or drive line. So Van has four on his weapon, but three on his drive. So that means clearly he's a physical attacker. Same with Aaron. Four in weapon, three on drive. Uh, but for someone intended caster like Anius, she has three weapon and then uh, four drive. Same with Fairy, Fairy lacking in shield, but doesn't matter. So Fairy is sort of mixed attacker, but I use her a lot as a caster. Same with well, it's not it's not fair because Reset has everything, so the Reset doesn't count. Katoru intended probably mixed attacker, but you can build him as a caster. Same with Judith, intended probably mixed attacker, but caster for me. Same with Burgard as well. 
it's just me overthinking stuff but i think you can make a guess based on that like fun always a uh, physical attacker usually have uh an elemental slot on their weapon uh, on their weapon line anius doesn't have it fairy has it fairy has both on weapon and drive line so mixed attacker aden is uh sorry uh weapon line reset none <laughs> only on drive line katoru weapon and drive like fairy weapon and drive weapon drive so again it's just me but you can build whatever like in my case i if 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 the character has four slot on their drive line then i will use them as a caster like burkhardt in my case i build him as like like a <coughs> mix attacker ish uh kotoru only only caster that's a support s uh support ish same with uh judas judas is my caster anya's caster fairy caster only van and aaron uh are my physical attacker so <clears throat> okay that's zypha okay we're not finished second the changes that we have in this game is our driver what is our driver in the previous game each master quartz has their own set of art so the changes in this game is that Colo core do not come with their set of art like yeah you don't see any art it's just bonuses so in this game art driver is a thing so you can buy this you can get it from drops you can get it from chess essentially take master quartz system separate it into, into two the bonuses for off master core that is whole core the art that comes with it are art driver but master core is set in stone the bonuses and art you know the same but in this game it's different it's separated so whole core comes with with their own bonuses each whole core has their own bonuses and art driver comes with its own set of arts so art driver they are <coughs> two things First is we have active art. Active art is the preset art that each art driver has. Usually they comes with most art user, uh, art driver sorry comes with two elemental uh, attributes like van straight away wind and time. This one has water and space. Blah blah blah. Right. Uh, like this one do not come <laughs> with active art, so it doesn't. It comes empty so you can see the custom slot like this one we have uh, a lot of custom slot right so what is custom slot custom slot is essentially speaking sorry yeah custom slot essentially speaking is what the hell all right I forgot okay sorry <laughs> got used to the second game so essentially custom slot is this basically you we talk about art driver this is art driver it comes with a preset of a set of arts but you can buy individual arts from the shop so custom slot in your art driver allows you to mix and match whatever arts you want to put into your preset art driver so like this this one let's say i like this one this art driver on van but i don't really like all the options i have from the preset arts i can min max and pick the arts i want on him and put it here like let's say i like this art so yeah the 300 e 380 ep arts on van like i like some kind of healing so you can see the icon where's healing yeah this one or this one i want healing so there you go so you can mix and match your art driver and art plugin oh yeah this thing is called art plugin, <laughs> art plugin if i don't mention it if i got if i didn't mention it earlier the individual art that you can buy from shop or get from drops treasure chest or whatever this is art plugin so art driver is this basically allows you cast uh, allow you to cast art 
art plugin is the individual art that lets you customize your art driver okay okay done <clears throat> essentially yeah you can mix and match like right now my judith judith is my optional my best caster because i'll talk about the character later but essentially we have all we have eight party members four male four female Anias is a caster but she also my emergency healer fairy is my buffer slash emergency uh, uh slash art user Anias caster uh emergency healer fairy buffer image uh buffer art user reset shielder art user so i for, i choose i choose judith to be my primary art damage dealer because she her craft is expensive like all of her craft costs pretty expensive so i thought yeah you know what i'll focus on dealing damage with uh, judith reset will be my shielder so it's up to you so this is uh this this art driver you can get like pretty late in the game i think before the climax at the end of the chapter or at the end of the final chapter so you can get it quite early uh, i guess quite early i guess so you can essentially build whatever you want with this you can pair up one two three four five six you have eight slots so you have eight arch that you can use whatever right to pick your poison you know so this is in my in my opinion good for your favorite art user because I'll talk about a short skill, but as long as you have gather again later, EP cost will not be an issue. You can build a self uh, self sustaining art nuker, you know. Okay, that's all for uh, Saifa a little bit. And that's all about art driver art plugins. I want to talk about Holocore. Okay, so let's talk about Holocore. So the game has a lot of holocore. So I'll put the again. This is contextually. I'm playing in JP, right? So the translation is not out. <laughs> or at the current moment, got taken down. So contextually, this will be this is useful if you are playing in JP, <laughs> because you can just read it if the game is in English. So, anyways, I'll put the translation on the screen. <clears throat> I'll go each holocore one by one and then i guess give my thoughts on it or whatever but before that uh holocore essentially conditional monster court you need to have one boost you need to be in boost mode at least level one to get all of the as boost ability or the bonuses <coughs> so let's start so uh okay a little bit spoiler we have mayor the default mayor law mayor gray and mayor chaos how do you get it uh mayor law gray and chaos you will unlock its skin because it's still it's not a different holocore it's just different skin for mayor holocore uh once you hit level three on your lgc alignment so you have law level three you'll get mayor law skin if you have a gray level three you get mayor gray skin we have chaos you get chaos you get it so anyways i'm gonna go one by one and then uh give my thoughts on it a little bit <coughs> so we have this is the mayor standard holocore uh all holocore will give you increase in magic attack and extra ep all everyone every holocore has it it's just the numbers are different so for me I don't pay attention to that I don't really care I care about the bonuses so from first line into this last line on the as boost ability section <coughs> so uh, the first line for mayor standard is just stats increase if you boost yourself you get all of that 20% attack 20% art strength 25% defense art defense and 20% speed the second line is essentially physical dodge and crit rate so you get 30 percent physical dodge 30 percent crit rate so if i am using this holocore on van and i boost myself i get 45 percent plus 30 percent crit rate so 75 and then 
you get physical attack, magical attack. You can if you again con contextually, I am playing in Japanese, so I just memorize the logo or the icon they use. So the sword icon is generally speaking physical damage increase, so 25%. The art thing is 25%, and then the last one is just regen. So HP and EP regen. So 50% HP regen every turn. EP EP recovery. 9% of your total EP every turn. Is it good? Yes. This is a good well-rounded total core for Van. It has good increase in terms of uh, stat spread. So you get all of the stats increase. You get some extra damage. You get a bit of sustain. Uh, you get uh, dodging and increase both of your attack. Overall, in my in my opinion, good, but I don't use it because I prefer Mayor Chaos. We'll get to there. Next is Mayor Law. What is it? So the first line is HP regen 10%, EP regen 10%. You get a lot of CP actually, 7 CP per turn. Second increase is second line is defense and R defense 60%. And then third line is strength, art strength 20%, speed 20%, movement plus 3. And then you get the physical and magical damage increase 25%. This one, is it good? In my opinion, it sucks. But, <clears throat> here's my reason. This is a good holocore for tank Van. Because Van is the first protagonist in Kiseki series that can you know, be a tank. He has enough... I guess his kit is revolving himself being an effective tank. He can aggro enemy, he can debuff, he can slow enemy down. Good. My point is that I don't like playing defensively. I like gimmicky playstyle, but I don't prefer playing defensively because if you can kill it's better i like safety but not at this rate because 60 percent is very high it's good for like taking damage and stuff but eh for me i don't like it some people like it some people don't up to you i'm just that's just my opinion anyways <clears throat> moving on to mare gray what is that so Mary Gray, dodge 70%, strength, and then second line is just standard stats increase. You get a lot of speed, third line speed 30%, movement 7, and then you get physical and magical attack increase. Magical damage increase, sorry, physical, ma physical damage, magical damage increase. Is it good? No. Because, well, uh, I think because the change of the mechanic of dodging, Dodging in this game is pretty bad compared to uh, the previous game because first they split dodge into two like previous game but right now but in this game starting in this game dodging is uh, magical dodge is a thing it's a visible stats so yeah whatever second uh, while you can still hit 100% dodge or physical dodge in this case Counter rate is not 100%. <clears throat> like in previous game, Fi Dodge Tank is like a most common build among the playlist. In this game, every time you dodge, you do not have 100% chance to counter straight away. It's 50%. So every time you dodge, coin flip, your character will counter or not. So, in my opinion, not that useful. At first, people thought, oh, Fairy might might be like the new fee, you know, but nah, it's not. It's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Because while you can, you know, dodge every attack, at least physical attack, counter rate, not really. So, unfortunately, dodging, not as good, in my opinion. So, if you like it, use it. If you do, I don't, so I don't use it. So, Mare Chaos, in my opinion, the most offensive one in terms of the in terms of the rest of the Mare. Mare Standard is the best in, if you want a good stat spread, but Mare Chaos is good for 
a more offensive gameplay you have 50 percent crit rate again i am when i uh, i will list down based on the line in game so yeah bear with me 50 percent crit rate great <laughs> easily you can crit every time you attack if you are in boost mode uh stats increase 45 percent the highest but lower defense or defense speed and movement which is fine you get a lot of strength and arc strength and then physical damage magical damage increase 25 percent standard across across the board i think so 25 25 25 25 so it's fine but the crit rate is good though so if you uh, i like it the most offensive one in my opinion i think most people that play the game agree this is the best fun slot maybe the argument is mayor law uh, mayor standard sorry law is bad <laughs> uh, gray is bad but mayor standard yeah you can because the sustain you get uh he, hp you know that's kind of good for like a tank fun but mayor chaos in my opinion is the best <clears throat> next is aim i think it's it's not aim it's aim i think so first one is craft or art that heals hp will increase the recovery by 30 percent that's the first line so arts or craft healing art of craft will increase the, H the recovery amount by 30 percent second art strength arts art defense increase and then increase art aoe or art hitbox by one is it good it's a good starting uh holo core for anius but i will not use it end game i use it on katoru because he's my healer that's it that's all i use it for katoru because katoru is my shielder and healer alongside anius that's all but if i have other option i might i might I will I will give the new option to Katoru and not use aim. I am overall good if you have no other option. Because in my opinion I prefer to use item as healing options rather than using craft. But Katoru has it so why not? Because Anias I will use uh, Anias as craft to heal, like emergency heal. Katoru depending on my mood, sometimes I use his uh healing craft sometimes i just use food again i don't have any other options the one the art uh the sorry not the art sorry the holo core that I, i'm not equipping on anyone i think they are it's not bad it's just it doesn't fit the way i want to play like you might have some use for them but again different people different different stroke different folk or whatever it's called yeah whatever <laughs> Again, not it doesn't suit my playstyle, but if you like it, go for it. Next is Vene. What is Vene? Movement, this is very initial whole core. Uh, movement plus 10, strength, arc strength increase, speed increase, and physical attack. Vene, good. But I view fairy as a caster and a buffer. So I use art centric whole core on fairy. This one is good, just generally, like for any physical attacker with like a melee hitbox like fairy use a gun so not really melee isn't it so you can use it on Adam, you can use on van but van is better with mare and they are better holo core for Adam. so vene kind of stuck in the middle but overall good early mid game holo core in my opinion for physical attacker again it depends if you if you view fairy as a physical attacker then go for it if you don't like me use it as a caster whatever go for it <laughs> i will be putting the translation on the screen don't worry next is salos salos is pretty bad <laughs> it's, it's functional but they are better holocore so hp regen 15 percent physical damage magical damage increased 25 percent and then hit rate 100 percent Eh, it's it's fine the hp might you you can get some use out of it like if you want your healer not getting one shot by stuff or if you want your healer to be the last man stand or something it's fine <laughs> but i i think they are better stuff yeah 
whatever next is cameo cameo is uh aaron's initial holocore so from top to bottom the hundred <coughs> percent counter rate hundred percent so from fifty percent it will increase to hundred percent dodge fifty percent counter attack damage 40% strength 25% physical damage 25% is it good for this is a very dodge tank centric holocore is it good no <laughs> why because you need in full boost you need to be in boost mode not full boost sorry you need to be in boost mode it's good on let's say Arca system it's very bad in Zypha system because First, you need to trigger or you need to activate with boost, number one. So, you will not get that 100% counter rate straight away. Number two, counter is just not good <laughs> in this game. Because fairy, it's better to use fairy as a caster rather than a counter, counter bot. So, it, I mean, it's up to you if you like to use it. I don't see myself using it. Like, I use it like that's why i get it to level 5 but i don't see myself using it it's fine it's functional if you like it but it's conditional you need to kick start the your dodge tank essentially before it can function fully and it doesn't function that long because as boost is boost mode it's like two turns if you're at level one boost level two you get three turns so yeah pretty bad Next is Karabia. Karabia is so good for Aaron. So phys uh, physical damage increased by 40%, strength increased 50%, and then defend or defend down 25%. Basically, fit for Aaron because Aaron is the agate, is the guy, is, is the um, Randy of the team. Basically, he has that craft that lower hp but increase your physical attack or something or increase your strength so this is very fitting for Aaron. basically yeah that's my option that's that's what i am equipped Aaron with karabia so good next is c3 c3 is reset's uh, initial holocore so the first effect is increase as push uh, sorry as boost duration increase by one so if you're at level one boost you get two turns if you're at, at full boost you get three turns so plus one of that so at level one you'll get three turns full boost you get four turns is it functional it's good but you have you also have to consider the stats increase you get defend and art defend no in my opinion no i don't use it <laughs> defend and art defend you get extra damage increase physical attack magical attack physical damage magical damage increase but you don't get offensive stats increase so some people might use it because the s boost duration will help you because you know you need the longer you can maintain your boost duration the better you can you know there's a lot of advantage you can get higher proc rate on your shard skill you know you get you get higher longer duration with stats increase but i don't I don't see myself using it so some people might find use for it i don't so whatever next is otis the best one of the best holocore in the game in my opinion the first one is just casting time it's jp versus english translation like in english we basically to put it simply, casting time reduction by 40%. So you cast 40% faster in English. That's casting time reduction by 40%. In JP, just mean you cast faster, 60%. It's it's positive versus negative kind of connotation. Like I got used to English terms, like because I've been playing in English, right? For other games. So the term they use is casting time reduction by 40%. So in JP it's just 
inverse of that so they use the no the positive number so essentially it's 40 time uh 40 percent faster casting time no 60 percent 60 percent casting time while the the term we use in english term is casting time reduction by 40 percent so you cast 60% times faster than normal because you reduce it by 40% you get it you, basically you cast faster uh, and then you increase your magical damage no stats increase but you because you cast art faster so it's a juggling decision between you don't get stats increase but you cast art a whole lot faster so is it worth it up to you for me it's worth it I use it on fairy pretty good in my opinion so fairy is fast so she casts faster and then you use some some kind of bell on her i game I, the game doesn't call it bell so but for me just for association part i just call it bell you know the one that reduce delay after casting certain elemental art blah 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 right so pretty good and then rain Rain is uh, Katoru Salicion initial holocore. Decrease EP cost by 40%. So in this Japanese term, they said... How do I translate it? Se uh, EP cost is at 60% of the total EP. So the, the term I got used to from English is... EP cost reduction 40% sorry <laughs> that's the term I, I, I came up with so the first line is EP cost reduction 40% and then second is EP gain every turn 9% EP regen 9% and then magic damage no stats increase usually get you just get a lot of discount and sustain is it good pretty good this one I give it to Anius <laughs> Because Anias cannot use Cather again. I'll talk about Cather again later. But a good sustain, you know, for our user. Next is next is Pokel. What is Pokel? Pokel HP regen, EP regen, stats increase, physical damage, magical damage, hit rate, crit rate, and then dodge rate. Pretty good. This is pretty good. This is a very well rounded holo core in my opinion. You get sustain, you get stats increase, like a lot of stats increase. I think the comparable one is with Mare. Mare Holocore, this one. They are very well rounded stats distribution. So I give it to I give this to uh Reset because why not, right? She get a little bit of sustain, she get a little bit of stats increase. Pretty good. Next is Gap. What is Gap? Gap is pretty straightforward. First, increase Ascraft damage by 100%, double your Ascraft damage, and then reduce Ascraft delay by 40%. Again, the term is positive negative thing, you know, like we English reduction, so it's 40% in this case. Well, JP. It's 60 percent i don't know faster or something anyway i can't act faster after s craft at 60 percent rate or something so s craft damage increased by 100 percent so double and then s craft delay delay after s craft reduced by 40 percent is it good uh in my opinion situational while they um there are some advantage of spamming s craft but in a long long combat event where you have to fight boss more than let's say 10 turns it will lose its value after the two initial s craft so let's say i use it in on Aaron, Aaron s craft twice in a row because you know we can do it in this game but they remove it in the second game so after the s craft Aaron will not have any function i mean you get it i you get it you can s split team whatever right you can switch out Aaron, but up to you 
I think it has some function like like gimmicky function like oh you have one extra bot but we do not have emblem master court in this game we do not have it so you either to get your EP to get your CP back you need to you either need to use the sauna which is not available in most dungeon or there and there's no equivalent of emblem master court in this game so it might be it might uh, if you find if you find a way to generate at least 100 cp per one random battle first tell me how to do it second if you can do that then yes you can abuse the hell out of gap but in my opinion i like consistency that's all that's my place i like consistency i like flexibility i do like gimmicky uh bill but depends so gap in my opinion functional useful but generally speaking it doesn't really fit my playstyle because it's not sustainable in a long dungeon crawl i think maybe you can get it because uh, you get 10 cp back per kill in this game so let's say you face eight enemies you can get 80 cp back easily maybe more if you have gladiator headband but again it's not sustainable because you will not face eight enemies like in consecutive manner so for me it's functional it has its own use but i don't see myself using it i just use it for fun there are better ways there are better options but if you like it use it that is oz oze sorry i don't know how to pronounce it Oz is uh let's call it Oz. <coughs> oh Oz is Judith's initial holocore. So the first the first one, the first line is uh Yeah it's another positive negative thing. Ten percent chance to absorb magic damage <laughs> or magic attack. So in this case, it's the Japanese use the positive term, but we use the negative term. So 10% uh, chance to absorb magic damage, magic attack, and then physical magical uh, damage increase. Pretty bad. <laughs> I don't use it. Because you can use it on Van for like magic based balls. But I don't see myself using it, so... Yeah, it's not that useful in my opinion. Pretty bad. Next, my favorite, Loray. What is Loray? So from top to bottom, increase EP cost by 50%. So if you cast out, you will have to, the total cost will increase to 150%. So increase EP cost by 50% and increase art damage by 100%. Pretty good. So it doubles your art. It's like Pandora Hole, uh, not, not Pandora Hole Core. Pandora Master Core. Increase your EP, but also increase your art damage. And then art, strength, and speed increase. And then magic damage increase. Pretty good. One of the best Hole Core in the game. My favorite, I use it on Judith. Because Judith can, you can easily get Cathar again on Judith. Second, I use Judith as my primary art user or art damage dealer. Because Anya's Fairy and Reset has their own secondary role. Shielder, healer, buffer. So Judith is the one that you can focus on dishing damage through art. Plus Judith, as I mentioned before, Judith's craft are pretty expensive. So it's not worth it to use Judith just to spam craft. So Lore is my answer to that. They, they changed Lore in the second game. It's a lot better. But this one, pretty good. Still good, still functional. Next we have Nagi. Nagi. Nagi is good. This is a uh, Burgard Holocore. Initial Holocore. Increase crit rate by 50%. Physical damage increase and speed increase. Pretty good. If you don't want to use Karabia on Aaron, you can use Nagi on, on him. Because... I think this is the first game 
where you can hit 100% crit rate so you can see on the screen uh, the first right hand screen the four lines on the right hand side you can see 96% 101 20 and 12% so 96 is my hit rate on Aaron and then the second line is 101 that's my crit rate so this is the game first in in the series i believe that you can hit 100 percent crit rate from accessory and quartz so the options you have for aaron or whoever physical attacker you want you can do it on one as well is if you don't like karabia on aaron you can still get him to 100% crit rate and give them this Nagi but it's kind of waste because Nagi increase your crit rate not crit damage so kind of be a still a better option but it's still pretty good if you need that 50% crit rate on anyone just give it Nagi like I give Nagi to Burgard while I do cast uh, art on Burgard that 50% crit rate is still useful even though the buff you get is very physical focus the speed is also good for casting so you know up to you in my opinion it's still good last one is bathim uh in my opinion pretty gimmicky holocore okay the first line is increase what is it oh yeah the first line is extend duration of stun on enemies when attacking like enemies in this uh, uh, stun is like break system where i think the good example would be cold steel 3 where you can abuse the hell out of the break system if you see the boss is about to get their turn you break them you can push them lower on the timeline right the AT timeline but in this game uh, stun is essentially one turn kind of thing so if the boss is behind you you stun them you can only act one time before the boss is not stunned so this one is pretty good on stun but again it's conditional so up to you uh, the second line is damage against stun enemies so you just deal more damage to stun enemies and then you get strength, defense, and then physical attack. Is it good? Uh, stun for me is a luxury. Like I don't actively try to stun enemies because while you can he easily stun enemies in random battle, in boss battle, you start at zero stun gauge because most of the important or the big boss battle you start straight away in turn-based mode rather than action mode so may or, it depends on you if you like to abuse stun or if you like if you like to abuse stun it might it might it might have some use but like me i prefer consistency rather than um rather than gimmicky because in my opinion it's still i don't know conditional i guess to get the extra to get the damage you need a, a little bit of setup you know so it's still useful so up to you i guess but i don't see myself using it <laughs> so anyway those are all the uh holocore that are, are available in the game excluding mary have 15 i believe so let's my recommendation is mare standard mare chaos aim is good just because you get the wider aoe on your art vine conditional if you like it use it um karabia good cameo for me it's not but if you like it if you like to play with dodge tank yeah go for it um uh, autist really good rain really good buckle really good gap situational low rate in my opinion the best one and Nagi, really best one. Bathim, conditional. The rest, uh, they're not bad. It's functional. It's just I prefer a more uh, offensive 
I guess, offensive playstyle and consistent playstyle rather than gimmicky playstyle. So, at the end of the day, it's up to you. So, yeah, done for Holocore. So, before we talk about short scale, we are, we are about to go into a short scale. I want to talk about the elemental value. So, in this game, each each quart has its own elemental value. You can see this is two, this is four, this is six. Blah 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 blah, right? So the other thing that you should know is that uh, elemental value, or uh, sorry, elemental slot will double your elemental val elemental value. So so you can see on the right hand screen my weapon line. I have currently I have four time. Because I got this from this four time value, so if I pick this one casting two, I have four, right? So four plus four should be eight. But right hand side, you can see my weapon. I have twelve. So it do essentially double my uh, casting two uh, quartz value. So instead of four, I got eight. So that's why I said for some characters they are elemental slot location might make or break the character depending on the way you want to build them. Make or break is a bit drastic I guess but you get the idea like some characters build are restricted by their elemental slot location like Katoru. I'm not saying like his uh, drive line is bad it's just it's it depends i guess it's not that he's broken as a character no it's just broken in a bad sense it's just that let's say judas the easiest example with judas i can get Cather again this one this is Cather again and arc feather I, I will go about that but essentially for art you do one for everyone essentially even van and aaron you want Cather, uh, you want arc feather on them why because arc feather just means after casting art you will have certain percent chance to add extra attack essentially i i, I just look at some of my playthrough even on the my my highest chain hit counts you can see when the wings is out that extra attack after casting art that is arc feather why arc feather is so important first so that you can get more chance to delay uh bosses delay quartz or impede quartz in this game or oh, both work for both art and craft so abuse the hell out of, out of that so that you can essentially delay opponent infinitely so that's why i recommend arc feather on everyone even for physical attacker yeah this one arc feather uh second why 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 uh and then cut again so far at least in the first game there are only two characters that can use Cather again based on the quartz that we get from playing the game is Judith and Fairy. coincidentally both because they have Mirage slot on it number one and as I mentioned earlier elemental slot will increase your elemental value of the quartz that you equip so having this one Mirage slot means you get double the the Mirage value of that specific court. So if you have higher value, that means you pretty much cut the number of slot you get to get one or to get the element of value required to get gather uh to get arc feather, sorry. To get arc feather, like the one that I have right now with uh Anias and Judith. So to some extent, that's why I mentioned to some extent, characters elemental slot may might make or break them, but it's not a big deal. The game is not that hard to the point of, oh, if you don't have this short skill on the character, the game is not beatable. No, no, it's just I like min maxing and I like maxing out every character. I try to build them the best I can. So for me, I because some character cannot get gathered again if possible i want all my art or all my art reaches so all all of the female characters 
get cathartic gain so that you can they can sustain themselves but it's not possible so yeah that's a miss so anyways going back to short scale so i will put the icon i think because the icon kind of garbage in this game i put the icon in the translation so short scale the first one is elemental impact why i said elemental because the type of impact scale you get is i will not i will only explain they are um effect but the chance the chance you can check in the game <laughs> you know whatever so the first one is elemental impact uh it's okay first sorry <laughs> we talk about the weapon line this is the weapon line this is the shield line this is drive line this is extra line so for the weapon line we have elemental impact number one it uh, elemental impact because it depends on what quartz you have how many elemental values you have so essentially what elemental impact does is it imbues your normal attack or craft with certain element so for the first time in the series you can essentially abuse elemental weaknesses through through your craft which is good but it requires you to min max your uh, equipment so unless you know what element the boss is weak to you can switch around i guess to abuse it the my only issue with elemental impact is that the activation is rng let's say i have earth fire water and wind quartz on my weapon line so i have a uh, earth impact Lay, uh, fire impact wind impact and water impact right i have all of the element of the main element uh, impact uh, let's say i'm fighting a boss that is weak to water but when i cast my uh craft fire triggers <laughs> so there's no way to control it it's all rng unfortunately after my 300 plus hours of playing the game it's there's no way to control it it's rng unless you check the bosses or the enemy's weaknesses and only uses one element quartz so let's say you only use fire because fire quartz so strength 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 stun 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 across your weapon line unless you do that then consistency is the issue i guess but it's a good option but we do not have like a way to abuse the hell out of it unfortunately so for me whatever i don't really care that much if i get it i get it if i don't whatever so that's elemental impact so the second one is sword breaker so the effect is uh strength down debuff strength when you use attack or craft or normal attack or craft straightforward the third one is I'll, I'll put the icon on the screen uh the third one is shield breaker like the quartz we have in coastal game defend down when using attack and craft again good next one is sword number four is sword breaking assault that means uh that a little bit different from the first two or yeah the first two breaker shard skill inflict or debuff strength when deploying shard on enemies deploying shard just means when you press square from field battle to to change to turn base mode that's all so that transition you know when you are in field battle you slash 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 and then you stun enemies you press square and then the game turn into turn base mode that is when the game call it deploy shard so you will only get this effect when you deploy your shard so that is sword breaking assault and then we have shield breaking assault like sword but debuff defense pretty straightforward it's up to you i i prefer uh sword and shield breaker the breaking assault only good at the start of battle 
like I prefer consistency so I prefer to look at a long um, a longer battle means I can abuse the hell out of the sword breaker rather than sword breaker assault up to you and then the fourth one is sorry fifth one sorry the sixth one fatal lancer uh, follow up attack on low health enemies and kill them it's good on dungeon crawl like a long dungeon crawl you want to save a little bit of EP, CP and time just want to save some time so whenever the hit the opponent has like I think it's percentage like opponent has like 2000 HP left or like less than 1% HP or something it will proc I don't know what the condition what how low HP has to be but at least for some most of the enemies in mid to end game when they have like 2000 to 3000 HP so I guess what less than 5% ish maybe or maybe more maybe less I don't know but low HP very very low HP and then the upgrade is Fatal Lancer EX just the upgrade uh, the circle one the the next one is burst gain regain HP and EP when you use attack and craft that's good I have it on all of them on all of the character so good because it heals your HP I think it's about 10% and then get your CP back 10% not 10% sorry 10 CP back I think the, the highest you can get from burst gain the highest number of CP you can get from burst gain is 15 so just do one normal attack as long as and it will pro well again it has its own base uh activation rate so you if you are in full boost you can you can proc it <laughs> at higher success rate but essentially what i was trying to say is burst gain is good but the activation rate is rng being in boost just increase the activation rate in my opinion still good and the last one is the executioner uh follow-up attack when the enemies are stunned or when you are hitting a stunned enemies pretty good just extra attack it's like fatal lancer but the condition for fatal lancer is enemy at very very low hp while executioner just means you are hitting stunned enemies so extra attack is it good is it bad up to you it's fine in my opinion it's just extra attack so in my uh so my suggestion for weapon line what short skill to focus on is the third the second and third one which is sword breaker shield breaker that's good generally speaking like my my the the line of thought in my head is i want i prefer not prefer i prefer consistency when it comes to long-term battle like if i if the battle will run more than 10 turn then you get a lot more from sword breaker and shield breaker rather than sword breaking assault and shield breaking assault fatal answer fine if you it's just save some time i guess you can drop it if you don't want uh, and then burst gain burst gain is same with executioner a fatal answer is the same as the executioner burst gain a must in for everyone actually because you need aside from your normal attack you kind of need extra ways to maintain your uh, or main, uh, have a consistent way of gaining cp back so burst gain just help with cp regen or cp generation for character so pretty good so sword breaker my recommendation is sword breaker shield breaker and burst gain that's my recommendation fatal answer and executioner if you can get it fine it's good if you don't get it don't sweat on it you know next is shield line so next is uh shield line so shield line basically consists a lot of uh elemental not elemental sorry so consists a lot of shard skill that gives you defensive advantage so let's start from the top to bottom so the first one like impact is elemental resist 
uh, in Kurono Kiseki, the start the game started or uh, the series start to associate one particular um, elements with one element. So <clears throat> for Earth we have corrosion, for water we have freeze, fire, burn, wind, seal, uh, time, blind, space, mute and then confuse for uh sorry fear not confuse there's no confusion in the game fear for mirage so the elemental resistance essentially you will have a set, a set chance to resist status element based on the elements you have so that's the first skill that's the first shot skill <coughs> Second short scale is the recovery guard. So whenever you guard in the game, you will regen some HP. The second one is rise guard. The yellow one, I believe. The yellow one is rise guard. When you defend, yourself you get some CP and then the next one is Forte Guard when you defend you get physical damage up and then the fourth one is the fifth one sorry you get Crest Guard when you defend you get physical defend up yeah it's good but I don't really defend in the game I just use shield and healing so up to you so the next one is <clears throat> covering shield. Covering shield is good because it reduces the damage taken by your ally. The only issue I have with covering shield is that it has very low activation rate, so you do not you cannot rely on it. But when it proc it's really good. And then next we have Revenge Arrow. Yeah, Revenge Arrow is more a uh, damaging uh, move. Whenever your allies got hit, you will counter it with like a damage move, damaging move. It's just extra damage. So if you have Van as your dedicated tank, then if you have someone else with the Revenge Arrow uh, short skill, then you can chip in some extra damage. That's all. The final one is Seraphim Force. Uh. Endures a fatal hit and restore HP EPCP once per battle. Where TLDR emergency revive or emergency guts. <laughs> so if you about to get one shot, Seraphim Force proc, you get some HP EPCP, and then for Anias essentially, Anias can just use Ascraft, heal and revive everyone. Delicious. So my recommendation is try to get covering shield, even though the activation rate is RNG. Uh, and then for Anias especially, try to get Seraphim Force. She can easily get Seraphim Force, what I was trying to say. So Seraphim Force is good for Anias, uh, uh, covering shield good for everyone. Revenge Arrow, again if you have it, have it, if you don't, whatever. Uh, for the elemental for the elemental uh, <coughs> elemental resist, I prefer to have um, resist mute on my caster and resist seal on my physical attacker. So you need space quartz on your at least any space quartz to get the elemental value, uh, so that you can activ activate um, resist mute and win quartz to activate resist uh seal it's fine if you have a uh, rare locket you can use it but or you if you prefer to heal with um item you can do it i just prefer my my caster my art user have uh, some ways of resisting mute i guess <laughs> not that important but if you can get it if you can min max your uh quartz layout and try to get and get resist based on your art user or physical attacker it's 
better, I guess, if you don't, then, yeah, whatever, the game is not that hard to the point where you have to min-max to that extent. So, yeah, Seraphim Force for Anias, and then, uh, Covering Shield for everyone. The rest is just optional if you get it. Consider it a bonus if you don't get it. Eh, whatever. Next, my favorite, uh, short skill, set of short skill, Drive Line. So... <clears throat> The first one is elemental boost, just like impact scale, just like resist scale. Uh, basically, it boosts your elemental art. If you have uh, mirage quartz, it will. If you have mirage value on your drive line, you get uh, some extra damage uh, when you cast art. When you cast mirage art, so fire arts, you get extra boost for extra damage of fire arts. Blah blah blah. Depends on the elements you have on your drive line. And second one is Voyage Breaker. So this is uh, like Sword Breaker, more or less. So when you use offensive art, you have a, uh, you can inflict uh, ATS down or art strength down. The the third one is Shield Spirit Breaker. Reduce the art defense. Pretty good. This is the equivalent of Soul Breaker, Shield Breaker, uh, but for art, essentially. And then we have Voyage Breaking Assault, Inflict ATS down or Art Strength down when you deploy Shard. Again, I prefer the Breaker skill rather than Breaking Assault because consistency. So, same with uh, Spirit Breaker Assault. And then... Number six, my favorite art skill, uh, my favorite shot skill in the game, Arc Feather. Initiate a follow-up attack after using art that inflicts AT delay on target. AT delay. So, uh, as I mentioned before, you can delay opponent with quartz. Impede quartz is applicable on arts. Arc Feather lets you delay opponent and you can also add extra delay on opponent with arts <laughs> so essentially if you abuse the hell out of arc feather you can potentially in delay infinitely arc feather has delay in its kit through quartz you can also inflict extra delay so arc feather is so good and also the follow-up attack just means extra damage so a feather get it uh the bottom one cather again cather again restore ep depend uh relative to your uh damage done with arts good for self-sustaining character so if possible you want to have cather again and arc feather on everyone but it is not possible in this game only except two characters so Anias and uh, Judith because they have Mirage line other characters are pretty hard to do you have to sacrifice some quartz I guess but Ketar again is so good it's just uh, Titania Master Quartz pretty good and then uh, Avenger spell counter with art after dodging a magic base attack it will still use AP I uh, never had it prop, unfortunately for me. After 300 hours plus of playing this game, never prop once. I just ignore it. So, for recommendation, try to get uh, Voice Breaker, Shield Breaker, Arc Feather, uh, and for some characters, Gather again. Those are like my recommendation. The boost is, again, depends. Usually, I try to. How do I say? It? I try to get the boost based on the art that I will try to spam. <laughs> Like I will spam a lot of uh, aerial dust. I try to spam a lot of um, uh, obsidian ray. So try to get time and win. Again, it depends. You mix and match your art driver based on the elemental value you have on your drive line, not the other way around. So, right, yeah. Let's continue. Extra line. <coughs> <laughs> so extra line so the first one is just uh how do i say it? 
elemental starter the the one with the guy flexing it you get the buff depends on the again element you equip you have god starter which is increase your defense and art defense when you deploy short uh, you get energy starter that gives you hp regen when you deploy short you get power starter when you deploy you get uh deploy star uh, power starter you get strength up when you deploy short you get uh give starter give you insight when you when you deploy short you get quick starter increase your speed and movement when you deploy short art starter increase your art strength when you deploy short phantom starter gives you stealth when you deploy short essentially starter skill depending on the the elements you have i guess and second we have Next we have the auto scale. Auto forte, auto crest, auto quick forte, increase your strength at the start of your turn. Crest, increase your essentially the second scale is the second short scale is auto elemental auto. So if auto forte which is fire you get strength up. Auto crest you get defend up, which is earth, uh quick time or wind. You get quick means just mean high speed I guess. Uh, and then you get the the third one is charger skill what is charger skill uh recover hp ep cp after battle so if you have hp charger you get hp recovery at the end of, at the end of combat ep and cp is it good um in my opinion no <laughs> because whatever i don't really care that much about hp ep charger because it doesn't work on long battle it good for it is good for like a long dungeon crawl but long dungeon crawl just i just heal with items <laughs> so it's not in my uh, let me let me say it differently it's not worth it changing your layout of your quartz just to get the charger skill if you have it good if you don't it's not worth it it's not worth it's not worth the hassle focus on other extra shard skill uh, next we have a uh, treasure hunter treasure hunter pretty good basically the uh mirror lens of the shard skill lets you see chests across the map next we have hawkeye again just like treasure hunter treasure hunter show you the chest uh Hawkeye show you the enemies on the map. The moon lens of uh, short scale. Good for any situation essentially. Next we have Lake Breaker. Lake Breaker inflict slow when using attack and craft. Is it good? Yes. When you inflict slow, I'm not sure about slow. Because we have speed down, we have slow and then we have delay. Speed down just means you reduce speed. Delay just means you add more turn, more waiting turn. I'm not sure about slow. I think it's the combination of delay and speed. I'm not sure, but it's good. Whatever. Abuse the hell out of it, leg breaker. Because if I understand correctly, speed just means the enemies are slower. That will increase their, that will reduce their turn on the timeline. It doesn't inflict delay, but it will push them down because the AT timeline is influenced by the character speed right slower character will act you know will be pushed further down so I get inflicting slow just means the enemies will be pushed down lower in the AT timeline not delay like it's just because they have lower speed they will take more time to act right so leg breaker pretty good so inflict slow on enemies when using a tackle craft next we have leg breaking assault leg breaker but when you deploy shard which one is better the consistent one leg breaker not leg breaking assault because leg breaking assault you need 
it only works when you deploy shard after it expires you will not get the shard skill to activate so leg breaker better next is scrum up what is scrum up scrum up just means increase the scrum of the scrum range the one that i showed you earlier with reset pretty good because to increase your ring radius you need to be in full boss mode but it's a lot harder to maintain your boost so if you can get to if you can do it for free at the start why not use it is it worth it to abuse the hell out of the layout to get the scrum up no but if you can get it get it next is crisis force uh pretty bad gain stats increase when your hp is low for one turn pretty bad like basically emergency <laughs> when i don't know i don't like it i don't use it so but if you can find like gimmicky if you like to be abused then yeah sure you use it and the final short skill give steal steals an enemy 80 bonus when using a tiger craft is it good maybe if you can steal let's say enemy has like uh cp or crit bonus on their 80 timeline you might have some use for it but again situational not worth the hassle of um you know changing your layout just for it so my recommendation is treasure hunter hawkeye on at least one character so that you can see stuff on the map and there's leg breaker the rest is just situational because let's go to the orbin because usually when building a character i plan around they are like art user i plan around on their drive line first for physical attacker i plan around they are uh, weapon line so for physical attacker i try to get burst gain straight away on everyone actually even fairy has it so for art user i try to get uh arc feather first uh cataract gain later for the one that can get it so my point is and for shield line sorry before i forget for shield line i try to get covering shell on everyone which is quite cheap as you can see it uses only earth quartz so slot one earth quartz on your uh, shield line and then you're good to go so my point is that extra line is where usually i put all of the remaining stuff so for our user as an example for our user i focus on short scale i try to i aim for a certain short scale and then use the quartz put the quartz i need on their short scale uh, to get the short scale i need on their drive line uh same with uh weapon line try to get all of the necessary short scale i need and then what the remaining leftover will be used on the remaining slot i have on your uh, on my uh, drive line oh sorry on your my shield line and extra line so that's the way i build character let's like let's say uh fairy uh try to get because she has mirage line so i try to get a feather first gather again okay and then that's full try to get any earth quartz here so that i can get covering shield just this one uh and then equip until she gets um burst gain on her weapon line and then whatever stuff like i need like speed casting bell blah 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 i put it on the extra line so the leftover quartz usually i put whatever stuff i have on the uh extra line so that's my at least my way of thinking on how i equip and gear up character or gear up their uh zypha so for extra line generally speaking again this is for me i don't know if you like to abuse it you abuse it extra is whatever stuff i have left over because for me i try to balance out the shard skill i have for each character the recommended ones try to get all of the shard skill that i think necessary 
and then also try to balance out the stats they gain from quartz like casting quartz like speed quartz EP quartz EP cut quartz hit rate maybe bell you know to reduce their delay yes blah 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 and crit rate quartz uh art and um delay quartz blah 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 right so impede quartz sorry delay is the effect so my, my point is depends on how to how you choose to abuse it like uh, i've been using a walkthrough while playing kuro and there's one section of the walkthrough where at least I, it's not jp players entirely basically uh the layout that the writer prefer and the jp writer in that uh guide that i am using they really focus on short skill rather than you know stats and short skill so i it's just you know way of playing it's just style of play if you like it you use it if you don't yeah don't use it so it's up to you if you prefer to abuse the hell out of the short scale and manage the layout of your cypher based on specific short scale you want then go for it like if you want to be like me where i try to balance out stats on character and short skill then i do like me or if you don't if you prefer for stats only go for it my point is there's no right or wrong way to play as long as you can kill stuff you get the game is not that hard to the point of you have to micromanage stuff so to don't have to worry about it uh i think that's all for the guy i thought i want to put like a like a bill but I don't think so because based on my holo core choice and my short skill preference I think people can guess what kind of bill I have everyone will have burst gain on every everyone will have burst gain on their layout everyone will have covering shield everyone will have at least arc feather everyone will have whatever stuff they can get <laughs> at least everyone will have a leg breaker for uh, my extra line short skill you know so uh the game not that hard I, it's a new mechanic uh i hope that people can at least people that watch can understand it i know it's a bit long but i i like to i like to look at people's bill because I sort of can guess the way they play the game like I approach the game differently some people approach the game differently or whatever right it's just I like I like looking at people I can talk about sci-fi system all day because I really like the system I like the combat system I like the flexibility I like the the gimmick it has it's very resource management kind of uh, combat in combat you have to re manage your resources which is good it's nice and also you cannot get everything like in cold steel in an arcus to arcus system uh, your build is essentially restricted to the character if the character is physical you have certain quartz that it's very high on your priority list if you the character if the user is art user then yeah you have a specific set of quartz that you want to maximize your art user damage or sustainability blah 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 right so Short skill, uh, Zypha, very interesting combo, and whole core as well, um, I really enjoy it, so uh, I hope that people that watch the video, I guess, find some use out of it, I hope. It's a very low effort video, I'm not very good at editing, uh, but I just share some of my thoughts with it, I hope uh, people find some use out of it, and I, I hope I try can make it simple <laughs> as I can, maybe I'm forgetting some stuff because it's been a while. This is not a recorded video. Like I basically combine my that one live stream I have. I, I will not take it down. But that one last live stream guide I have with a new recording because I accidentally overwrite my uh, save file so I cannot record a new one. Anyways, ciao. Thank you. Bye.